Well, hunger, the number one goal, is definitely one where we are very concerned about. Because in the current situation, we are so worried that all the progress that we have made in the last 40 years will be eradicated by this financial crisis, by the food crisis. Um, you know, over the last 40 years or so, we were able to half the number of, of people who were going hungry. But uh, now we're seeing growth again. And um, the food crisis, the financial crisis have pushed more than a, an extra 100 million people into hunger and poverty. And think of that, around 1 billion people nowadays do not know where the next meal is coming from. What an incredible challenge. This is why we're appealing to the world to uh, help us now so we can help the people who are going hungry. It's exacerbated. Last year we thought we are in the middle of a perfect storm. You know, in the spring of 2008, when we saw food prices, you bought a ton of rice in Bangkok one day uh, for $400. Six weeks later, it suddenly cost $1,200. I mean, it just became crazy. Uh, you had on top of that the uh, ongoing and, and growing challenges of climate change. You've got the fuel prices, meaning, uh, you know, getting food onto the table became much more expensive. You had one natural disaster after another and suddenly uh, food prices exploded. And then in the, in the fall, when the financial crisis hit, um, you know, the people, the poorest and the weakest are the ones that are going to be the hardest hit. They cannot be blamed for the financial crisis. They didn't get any weird mortgages on, on houses or something like this, mm, but they will be the most affected. And the way that they are affected is, is one very simple example, remittances. The money that workers who have emigrated send home to their families and relatives is a huge part of, of, of the economy in many countries. In Haiti, for example, 20% of GDP is just those remittances. And they have come crashing down. And that is gonna, that's just one aspect that will have a huge impact on the lives of these people. Uh, the countries of the world have been incredibly generous. Um, they've stepped forward with huge donations. They've increased it. They stepped it up last year. Um, the United States, you know, around $2 billion. Um, small countries really uh, increasing it. And then countries that weren't the typical donors in the past, Saudi Arabia being incredibly generous, giving us $500 million in cash. Do with it what you want. Just help the hungry. and. Uh, and we just have to appeal that, you know, we have to do it again. We need to raise uh, some $6 billion or so this year, and it's a huge challenge. Um, but I think that governments are realizing how important it is to fight malnutrition, to fight hunger. Because even if you just stay on a, on a just economical uh, argument, um, uh, child malnutrition can easily uh, cost uh, like 20 to 30 billion dollars in, in economic growth. It has a real impact. It has an impact on the economies of the countries. So it's important to invest into, for example, school feeding. And you know, what we've seen in the economic crisis is that there is money. For just 1% of all of these bailout packages, you could feed all the hungry school kids in the world for a year for 1%. And we have seen that money is there. I'm not calling, you know, $3 billion, that's how much it would cost. I'm not call, saying it's peanuts, but it's doable. We can do this. And that's the important message. This is not something where we, where we should despair, but we should use the opportunities that we have. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We know how to, how to fight hunger and how to help people. We just have to do it. It touches uh, many aspects. We fight poverty. Um, uh, we increase education, for example, with our school feeding problems. We empower women. We always, they're our target group to make sure that our food assistance reaches all those who are needed. Uh, we're using it, for example, HIV AIDS to fight that. Um, you know, the best medication in the world won't help if, if people are hungry and, and cannot digest the medications. So you've got lots of aspects. Um, climate change, for example, the World Food Program has planted more than 5 billion trees. We use our Food for Work projects um, to train people, to build irrigation dams, 
um, irrigation projects, uh, to do terracing. I was just in Haiti, for example, where we're doing terracing projects. Uh, Hands-on work that has a real effect so that uh, we together in the international community can, can fight to reach those goals. But it's a tough, it's a tough challenge. Well, I think they're they're both uh, wonderful partners. Uh, the United States uh, always our largest donor, always there when we need them. You know, two billion dollars in 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 two thousand eight. Um, the people in Darfur, uh, in those camps, would die if we wouldn't get the aid uh, that the United States is providing there. Uh, and the Europeans doing an absolutely marvelous job over the last, you know, decades. Uh, the European Commission has given four billion dollars. And on top of that, you've got the donations from the various countries. And also on a very hands-on on level, how they are helping us is, for example, the Europeans uh, over the winter and spring uh, have been escorting our food shipments that go uh, into Somalia. So that is life-saving work under very dangerous uh, circumstances. So they help in both the, the, the cash flow and also in the very hands-on um, help. And I think we, we need both partners. And uh, I think the good news is that, that the discussions are so ongoing. You know, the, the leaders of the world are debating these issues and they realize they have to act now because we cannot lose all of the progress we've made over the last decades. Well, I think in a very in a very basic sense, uh, you know, food is, is is the most basic need of people. Without nutrition, um, you know, the children will die. We see these effects uh, of what of what malnutrition does, and and how important it is so that these children have the right to get food and to get an education and be allowed to grow, and to develop and to learn, and to contribute and get an education and. Uh, and, and I think that's why it is so crucial that we all work together and enable them to have that. Um, and it doesn't take very much. I mean, you know, it takes 25 cents a day to feed a child. How basic, how elementary is that? Who could argue with that, that that right should not be given to that child?